Hey everybody, welcome back to www.itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here. This is part two of a two-part series on the dial tone recovery process of an Exchange Server 2007 Service Pack 1 database. In part two of two, we're going to look at how to create the dial tone database and recover and actually take all that data and merge it together after we swap the uh, dial tone out with the recovery database. Very cool stuff. Be sure to check out all my videos up on YouTube under the tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. And also for higher quality downloads, be sure to check out www.itvideocoach.com. Hey everybody, welcome back to itvideocoach.com. Bill Grismore here, nice to have you back. This is a two-part series on how to take advantage of a dial tone recovery, right? So it's very interesting. Hey, make sure to check out all my videos up here on YouTube under YouTube tag Grizzamore, G-R-I-Z-Z-A-M-O-R-E. If you want a little bit better, higher quality download, be sure to check out www.itvideocoach.com. Have all my Exchange, 2008, Vista, whatever videos I have up there will be there for you, uh, no problem. Okay, you can also do a search just for William Grismore, that is G-R-I-S-M-O-R-E, either on YouTube or Google, and you can find my videos out there that way as well. All right, so let's dive right in. We can see that we have Exchange Server 2007 Service Pack 1. We can see that we have four different databases. Now, what's important to note here is that you can only have uh, five storage groups in Standard Edition and I'm right on the edge of my limit here. I need to make sure that I leave room for a fifth storage group, which is going to be my recovery storage group that I'm going to use for my recovery of my uh, database here in the dial tone demonstration. Okay, so let's just dive in and take a look at what we got here. If I go back over to XP1, I'm going to take a look and see who I'm logged in as here. I'm logged in as Lucy. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to log out as Lucy. And I'm going to log in as a user called Lisa. And Lisa's going to send a whole bunch more messages over here. So let's log in as Lisa. And let's get some messages sent so we have something to work with here. And then we can uh, back up our database. Okay. So we'll send out a message to Lucy. We'll just say the meeting starts at 4 and we'll send that out and we'll say again to Lucy, it is 4.15, where are you? And we'll send that out just to get something in there. And we'll send another one more. Again to Lucy. Uh, the meeting is over. Where are you? Okay. Looks like something you do more in a text message than an email, but we get the idea. Just want to make sure we have some messages coming in. Okay, and we're going to log in as Lucy just to make sure that we have, you know, those messages. And then at that point, we'll have something we can actually work with in our backup. Okay, so we can see. And we have the three messages here that deal with the meeting. The meeting starts at 4, 4.15, where are you? Uh, the meeting is over. Okay. All right, so we're going to close that out. Okay, now what we want to do is go back over to our server here, and we're going to do a backup of storage group four. Okay, but before we do that, let's take a look at the uh, folder structure. And we have storage group four. We have all the log files for the storage group in the root of the folder. And then each database would have its own separate folder with the database by itself. So let's say that I had five databases in the storage group all the log files would get placed out here in the root folder and then the databases would be placed in their individual folder. Okay, And we're going to go into 
our NT Backup Utility. Now, the great thing about installing Exchange Server 2007 Service Pack 1 is that it extends the capability of the NT Backup to let us back up that storage group. So we're going to back up Storage Group 4. And we're going to create a brand new folder for that. We'll just create a brand new folder here at the root. We'll just call it Backup of Storage Group 4. And we'll call it a dial tone backup. All right, that looks good. And we can start that backup. We might want to verify some of the advanced setting. A normal backup looks good for this. And we will start that backup. So we want to make sure that we have a backup of some messages in our actual live database that we're using uh, before it becomes corrupted. And we can see that the backup completed successfully. So we have a live working database. The database is good. Everything's fine. And we have a backup of that database, which we do on a regular basis because we're good exchange administrators. We make sure that things are backed up. Okay. So at this point, it looks pretty good. Okay. Now, what I'd like to do is try to simulate some kind of database corruption which is hard for me to do. So we're just going to pretend. Okay. We'll pretend that the database gets corrupted. Now, this database that we're working with is quite large. We'll say this database is several gigabytes in size. Okay. And when that database gets corrupted, I'm going to have no choice but to restore that database from tape. Now, it's important to note here, the reason I'm going to have to restore it from tape is because I don't have another solution. Uh, I would recommend that you have in place an LCR at a minimum or a CCR configuration so if that database gets corrupted or hopefully doesn't get deleted, whatever happens to the database, if we had an LCR or a CCR, we could simply point to the passive node in a CCR or we could mount that other copy of the database in an LCR configuration. Be sure to check out my videos on both LCR and CCR and how they would come into play to kind of help you out. Okay, but if I don't have an LCR or a CCR, and my database gets corrupted, I'm going to have no choice but to restore the entire database. Now, the whole point of a dial tone recovery is, is that when I go to restore that database, if it is 2 gig, it could take a while. You know, it's going to take some time to restore that database. So, what do I do in the meantime? Okay, I can let my users work with what's called a dial tone database, which is a, a database, the same database I'm working with, only with the database itself deleted, so all their mail's gone. But, they can still work. They can still send and receive email. They're not going to see any existing email, but they can still work. Okay. Now you might want to send out a warning email to everybody telling them that, hey, don't freak out. You're connected to the exchange server. All your mail has gone. Uh, our database you know, became corrupted and we're working on restoring that database. That would probably be a good idea or you might have some very nervous users on your hand. Okay. So, Again, the main point is, is that we have to restore the database from tape. Our database is corrupted and users need to keep on working. And how do we go about doing that? Okay. So that's the whole idea behind the dial tone recovery. Okay. So what we're going to do right now is take this database that's currently mounted and we're going to dismount the database. Okay. By dismounting the database, it lets me get back into the file system here and I'm going to simulate, um, we're going to go back down here into the folder structure and we're going to uh, see if we can generate what we need here for a dial tone recovery. Okay. Now what I'd like to do is take this database and I want to move it or cut it into a temporary folder. So we're going to create a brand new folder. And we'll just place that in there. Now that is indeed a move. And when I say move, that means that it's no longer in the original folder as opposed to a copy. Then I'm going to take the log files because I might need these guys. And I'm going to copy the log files into that same uh, folder. Okay. Now the idea of doing this is that I have a backup. Now my database supposedly is corrupted. Maybe my tape is no good. Maybe I can use this 
and call Microsoft and or use ESE Util and do a repair on the database to try to get it back. So if I'm really, really, really stuck and nothing's working, at least I have this as a as a safety net. And that's why I want to make sure that I kind of keep hold of these files. All right, that concludes part one of this two-part series. When we come back in part two, we're going to continue with the recovery of the database using dial tone recovery method. We'll be right back.